Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm Catherine Smith Reynolds. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Mm -hmm. um, I'm here on a Center for Afrofuturist Studies residency. Mm -hmm. um, well, this is my first, um, my first artist residency, and I had placed like kind of completely unrealistic expectations on myself. I was like, I'm gonna have this really amazing like gallery ready show because I just like didn't have necessarily a frame for understanding um, what the intention of the residency was and then and I think it's been really wonderful to have the six the full six weeks to be able to sort of like let go of this desire to have finished completed totally polished work and come to a place of just um, really having playfulness with the process and just being able to um, let myself to go to places um, spiritually and emotionally and in the material formally that I think maybe I would have arrived at those places, um, but I, it, it just didn't take as long because yeah. I was able to really have that time and space to just be with myself and be with the work. and. Um, the understanding of Afrofuturism that I've always subscribed to uh, is a field where we are doing the work to decolonize existing infrastructure uh, and architecture and either um, reclaim a structure that was there before or to build an entirely new one. Because uh, early black thought existed in a quite sophisticated form, of course. When we abandoned the demonym American for the more specific statesir, we did so to make sense of a convoluted national identity. We imagined a more precise name, and one commiserate in phonetics with a national self-image of agility, efficiency, and pluck. We imagined something sporty and lean, something that suggested direction and speed. But more so, we wanted to acknowledge the many different states in which we each resided, scattered every which way, here and there, conflicted by the hierarchical divisions colonialism had produced. With this new name, we attempted to grapple with the presumption inherent to the concept of the singular nation state, a presumption of which many of us remain dubious and by which many of us remained endlessly confused, that we somehow, by some logic, were all supposed to represent one body. One perk of reparations, infrastructure. We file back into cities we've been pushed out of, renovating, repopulating, building businesses protected against the overcast of franchises and corporations with taxes and zoning laws. Our cities shimmer and hum, real symbols of something great, though it's too early to say what exactly. As new buildings go up, regulations limit size, style, and color to counter the aesthetic disasters of the gentrification era. Our new apartments fit with the, ori with the original architecture of these cities, updated where necessary to serve contemporary needs. We tire of material things, especially new material things, and thrift for our wardrobes. We oppose the hard gloss of suburban sprawl from which the bougier of us escaped and at which the less bougie once raised a brow. We glorify the impact of, we glorify the compact and lived in. Our apartments are humble and fresh, and so are our lives. There are more people of color in the cities than white. There are enough of them that, we, that they can't really be considered a, minor, a minority, but it's clear that they are from one stroll down any block. Amongst the population at large stand firm believers in separatism, secession, reactionary negation, but the majority of us mix with general accord. Some moments are seamless, others produce friction. Violence is rare, but does occur. The resulting outcry has made these incidences less common. We call ourselves Afro-statesers, because national identity, true national identity, is experiential documentation of a nation's people's attempts to, to survive in that nation. It's, um, freedom, freedom underneath the sun, the earth is the softest fur. And this is me just sort of beginning to explore with working with mixed media in a different kind of way. I feel like, um, something that's more similar to work that I would have done before this residency is like the way that this 
these these black and white and purple pieces. There's a little bit, there's some departures that are happening, but this is like a little bit more similar in the sense of like, I like to use things that hang and thread. Like I, I like to use um, <coughs> like Kanekalon hair for braiding um, in other installations. Um, and so this is my attempt to move beyond um, a little bit or challenge myself to move beyond a little bit that that fluidity, which feels like a really I need I, I need that like I need that sense of flow um, and movement in that way. But wanting to try it with materials that I don't know fur obviously it's it, there is a movement to it, but the way that it's situated in that piece there it's static and it's meant to communicate the ways that um, I don't know that 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 fertility or like that sense of softness that comes from the earth is this place that feels or, or like one one sensory access point I guess for it is immobile is this understanding of the earth as this place that um, is just something that we all walk around on and yeah. not an activated in live space but also another way of accessing that is this sense of earth as um, a mobile, soft, welcoming place if we allow it for ourselves and for other people. So I I was working on um, a sad disco queen, her name is Poutine Jackson. Um, basically kind of taking um, this persona of Donna Summers and like making her like modern in a way. And even though like disco I don't say like disco's dead, but it's just not ever going to be the same as like what it was in like 60s, 70s, even 80s. Um, but the fact that like with Donna Summers, it's like she is the disco queen. Like, you know, she is it, but at the same time, she like wanted to kill herself at one point. And what that actually means with like private and public self. Um, because that's something that I've struggled with for a really long time, um, with being like anxious as well as like having um, depression. And um, I've worked within like mental health within like black women as well with you know my mother suffering from like being bipolar as well as like you know having depression and passing those things on to me um, and how I look at myself within those like types of um, environments like with like a lot of people and openings and you know, talks and panels and exhibitions, like all of these things, it's like, um, I gravitated towards this this um, disco queen, but sad because she's understanding this like fame and um, it's taking a lot out of what she actually wants to be doing, what she actually wants to be saying, um, it's not really her. So often acts of sadomasochism and other vulnerable uh, intimate spaces are hidden. I look to turn them outwards to audiences so they may be consumed much like poetry because they feel like poetry. I am turning subjectivity into a science to then re, uh, re, restore that poetry back to science, eventually translating them from an online to an online environment that will give them a whole completely separate type of animism. Um, until then, I look to drawing and painting to create these images on four panels. I will create scores much like those of classical musicians to annotate uh, this performance to accompany. There will also be a key. This key will be shared as an individual work in itself, evidence of the translation uh, that will not be hidden. For years, composers have created what is known as graphic notation, which has allowed performers who are not classically trained to perform or appreciate the process uh, of the construction of music. My project is in their tradition, a tradition of looking below, looking inside, uh, externalizing this something tightly, um, tightly regulated, and a tradition of trying to create something beautiful or pleasurable, even. So that is the ending of my life. <coughs> <coughs> and,